let's continue about discussing the learning outcomes. So the measure is the key uh, thing about related to um, uh, di discussing probabilities. And that's what we will learn during this course. We learn to work with independent variables and product measures, and that's very, very important. So that's the part of the thing that's not discussed during the other, other similar course. There's a course called um, um, Measure and Integral, which some of you might have taken. Uh, so <clears throat> Measure and Integral is an analysis course with uh, lots of similar flavor, but uh, the key difference maybe is that uh, probability focuses a lot on product measures because that is uh, the thing that's describing statistical independence or stochastic independence. And that's usually not so relevant for, for mathematical analysis. So we work on product measures and we work on large products. So we are not taking a product measures of two measures, but we may have a an large connection of uh, spaces where we take products or actually eventually infinite products to describe stochastic processes. Then uh, we learned to recognize uh, what does it mean to, for a random sequence to converge. <clears throat> so, and this is important, of course, to understand um, when um, some kind of random phenomenon has limit in the long run, for example, Many of us have taken the course stochastic processes, so we discussed a bit about the limits, what happens for a Markov chain in the long run, or what happens to a randomized algorithm if you iterate it many, many times, what happens in Monte Carlo if you continue it for a long time. So in what sense and how close you get to something in the limit if you repeat something or if time goes on a long time. So that's the key topic of uh, probability theory helps here. We learn a bit about Gaussian distributions, well, which is kind of uh, familiar, but we learn uh, um, kind of precise statements and uh, also the precise proof how to understand why the Gaussian distribution or the normal distribution is so, so uh, fundamental in many cases. And finally, there's the key concept called sigma algebra, which actually it's a bit complicated because sigma algebra has a double meaning. There's one meaning is that uh, sigma algebra describes a technical structure of a space so that uh, where we can define um, what, uh, where we can calculate probabilities. So it's a technical thing for analysis, but it, it's also a thing to describe um, information. So in probability theory, sigma algebras are not used just for technical integration questions, but they are used to describe information. And that's what we will learn here. These are the learning outcomes. It, it is worth five credits and we are going to go quite fast. So we have six weeks to go during this period number three. I'm the teacher in charge and we have two teaching assistants, um, uh, Stavros Everdeed, uh, Evrodidis and then uh, Joona Karjalainen. And uh, they are, um, Stavros is going to give the teaching classes and Joona is going to uh, help with uh, the Zulip chat forum and uh, marking the exercises. <coughs> the teaching language is English. Um, if you don't like English, you can learn this course in Finnish as well. Let me point out to you. Maybe here, yes. If you like to learn this course in Finnish, so then I recommend to check out the excellent um, Finnish lecture notes by a colleague, uh, Tommi Sottinen from the University of Vaasa. He wrote a wonderful uh, lecture note in Finnish about this, precisely these topics. So that is online uh, available. Otherwise, um, um, what we are going to do live uh, here in the lectures, we are mainly using English. You are free to use Finnish to ask questions. You are free to use Finnish to ask questions and discuss things in Zulip, of course. But, um, but uh, the primary language will be English. This is about contents and workloads. OK, the usual stuff. What about grading? So how, what is the grade? The course grade called G is defined by um, exam points, E and then uh, homework points. 
H and then a quiz points Q. So there are three sources to get points. The main source is the exam because uh, the formula, there's some function F, which is uh, actually a split. So there's a max either if you get full points in the exam, so then you get grade five and that's it. You don't need to have any other points. So you may use only the exam to get your grade and this is the option A. Or there's another option. There's another option that um, you use the exam, 50% of the points for, from the exam, 40% of the points from homeworks, and 10% of the points from quizzes. And this is the other option, B. Which option do you want to use? You don't need to decide because our grading is that it takes the max of option A and option B. So whatever is better for you, you will uh, that will give you your grade. And um, we have some tuning for the function f depending on if, how easy or hard the exam turns out. So let me say that um, these are the boundary conditions. So f is a function that uh, it's increasing and if you get 0 0.5 there, so then uh, you get grade one at least, maybe you get grade one uh, with less points. And for grade five, uh, it's sufficient to get 0 0.9 in this form. Right, the main lecture material is, okay, we have lectures Mondays and uh, Wednesdays, and there's an exercise class on um, Thursdays. Then the study material, the main material is uh, Kalle Kytölä's um, lecture notes. It says 19, Kalle made a tiny update, uh, a bit of typos correctly during the Christmas break, so it is now 2020. The latest version is online. Other reading material, I might recommend uh, so-called uh, Stochastics Bible, Olaf Gallenberg's book. It's a thick book, which is uh, if you plan to think about continuing uh, probability uh, on the doctoral level, so then uh, you might uh, kind of think about browsing this book or maybe buying it. It's maybe $100 uh, from Amazon. And uh, I think I bought it 20 years ago or 15 years ago, and I think. I still haven't read everything about that book, so it has a huge amount of um, content and it's very elegant. It contains everything. The, everything is proved in a really elegant way, but it's real, still a really thick book. So it has, yeah, it is sort of a, a book about everything. But everything that we need to learn during this course is contained in Kalle Kytölä's wonderful uh, lecture notes. And um, the finish option is here, that's uh, Tommy Sartinen. What else? Prerequisite. So, family uh, number sequences, series, infinite sums should be kind of, you have should have seen them somewhere. Continuous functions, open sets. So for example, the course Euclidian Avarudet, which is now called metric spaces. So it could be helpful. Uh, the course metric spaces will be given uh, simultaneously now in period three. So if you feel that these topics of this course are really, really interesting, but they just seem too hard, these homeworks for you to do now. So maybe you could think about swapping to the metric spaces course, and taking that course now instead and coming back to this course next year. But uh, you don't need to have this course done. So you might feel also that, okay, you come directly to this course and if you can manage the homework, so then you will be fine. All right, this was my uh, description of the course the contents and requirements. So now it's time for a discussion. So feel free to open mic and or post to chat if you have any questions related to how to get the grade, how to complete the course, how to study. I'm not hearing anything immediately. In case we will have a break also during the lecture. So I'm trying to follow the two times 45 formula, 45 minutes of uh, things, and then a 10 to 15 minute break, and then another 45 minutes. So during the break, after the lecture, there should be a bit of time to discuss and ask questions as well. I also, uh, yes, please. Uh, uh, I'd like to ask about the exam. Can you hear me yep. okay? Yeah. Uh, have you had any ideas yet how to conduct the exam? 
we didn't think about it too much now. So we need some special sure. arrangements probably. So we might follow the usual, um, usual what we did in the fall. So yeah, but um, okay. nothing has been decided yet. Yeah. Okay. Uh, there are questions. Okay, let's close the course syllabus. Let's go to the course front page. And um, let's see, here are the key links, the lectures, exercises, and then the Zulip. And if you want need to log into Zulip, so this is where you can uh, get the uh, login invitation link. Then, uh, and the teachers are here. So Stavros, I think, I'm sorry, Stavros, if you are here, I missed spelled your family name, so it's Evdoridis. I hope it was close enough now. <clears throat> and then uh, Joona Karjalainen is the other teaching assistant. And the quizzes you have probably seen. So if you click in lectures and uh, the quizzes are here. So the idea is that there's a small quiz, which is not meant to be a lot of work. It's meant to be a tiny amount of work before the lecture. So it's for warming up a bit. And uh, the, the quiz is close before the lectures. So, and if you miss one quiz, don't worry. It's a very tiny amount of uh, bonus points that you get from those. So don't take them too seriously. If you really calculate how much they contribute to the course um, grade, so it's very, um, rather tiny epsilon that you get from quizzes. So if you miss one or something of this, so uh, don't take it too seriously, but uh, it's a good thing to way to warm up for the lecture. So what's ahead and what you might uh, need as a preliminary for the lectures and the topics of the week. There are no lecture notes uh, in, in here, like or no slides for each lecture, that's that's what I mean. So I'm not deliver, delivering any slides. I'm not preparing any slides. You tell us uh, lecture notes are so well written that uh, there's no use of uh, trying to make any site material on top of that. There are also two alternate uh, sources. Uh, there are book of uh, Jacot and Protter. So Jean Jacot uh, is a professor in Paris and then uh, Phil Protter, um, I don't uh, forgot where he is now, but um, they have a book with the similar contents. And then there's um, um, another book of David Williams. So I think David retired uh, from Cambridge um, already many years ago. So <clears throat> these are some textbooks you can, you can find if you prepare a kind of a printed book instead of a lecture note. And if you need these, so I could I could tell you maybe we should have them a copies of, of these in the library as well. Then we have the exercises here. And these are there's a homework for one homework set per week. So this is for week one. And there's a deadline on the Monday next week before the Monday's lecture. And, and this is the exercise sheet number one. And you can see that there are five problems about the probability theory. And uh, you need to write a handwritten, um, um, well justified explanation to the solutions and then return them uh, as one single PDF file to this box. And then the teaching assistants will uh, check and mark these homeworks. That's about the stuff here. Okay, lots of practicalities. I think maybe we have discussed sufficiently. Will you have any other questions related to practicalities in my mind? Uh, yes, I have a question. Uh, how do the exercise sessions work? It's like a questions and answer type of session. Ah, yes, that's a good question, of course. So on Thursdays, there are the exercise sessions and uh, they are uh, there to give you help and hints about homeworks. So and feedback about previous homework. So 
there is no kind of model solutions or know that you should present anything in the exercise classes. No, you just, you can go there and ask and discuss and, and get hints for the homeworks. That's how they are going to work. Okay, thanks. Okay, some more uh, questions about practicalities, arrangements. Hey, I recommend that uh, if you have time, you you try the Zulip and you try to create a login, uh, your own account and see what's going on there. So we hope to make it a lively discussion that really helps your learning. But to make it kind of fly, we need input from you. So you should be active there and ask, uh, ask things. Ask uh, sort of kind of, uh, don't worry to ask stupid questions because there are no stupid questions. So, so kind of, Try to be active there and make it kind of um, fly so that um, we can help you. You don't need to study alone. 